Good evening and welcome to everyone on the call. Thank you for taking out the time from your busy schedules to join us this evening. Just a quick introduction to us on the call. My name is Rahul Gua and I am the MD and CEO of Faircare. And thank you for the opportunity to present the Q3 results for FY24. I'm joined with my colleague Alok Kumar Jagnani, who is our CFO, and Pratik, who handles our strategy and investor relations. As I did in the last call, I will quote, start with a quote from Nelson Mandela in recognition of foray into Africa. It is in your hands to make a better world for all who live in it, and we believe Thyrocare can bring our business model to Africa to make affordable and good quality diagnostics available to all. I'll give you some of the key highlights of what we've been up to this quarter. Before we get into the details of this quarter, I'll reiterate the pay for performance pricing structure that we implemented at the beginning of this financial year. Earlier, our pricing structure was one size fits all, but now we have moved to a slab based pricing model, which we implemented in May 2023. This has led to an increased energy with our franchisee network with motivation to move up volumes and enter higher slabs. It will result in a movement towards larger franchisees and enable much greater reach from our large partners. As always, we continue to selectively expand our offerings. Arogyam has been our flagship brand in the preventive healthcare segment. And now we have two more brands, Jaanj and Hercheck. Jaanj is targeted towards lifestyle challenges or for you to better understand your health. We have solutions across the spectrum from anything you might be worried about, whether it is fever or something more serious, hair fall, cancer screening, as well as deep investigations for common chronic diseases like diabetes, heart health, amongst others. Jans is already doing one crore of monthly business. We've also revamped our Gynac portfolio and relaunched it under the brand name of Hurtcheck, and it focuses on women's health. I'm very pleased to announce that we have partnered with TestEasy to introduce genomics-based testing in our test menu. These tests will be targeted towards hospitals and marks our entrance into the genomics space. We are taking a very focused approach here, and it is largely genomics in the diagnosis space uh, and not consumer genomics. Uh, specifically, some of the tests are launched to use genomics in diseases such as tuberculosis, fungal infections, bacterial infection, and others. Partnerships with excluding API and B2G did phenomenally well in the quarter as we onboarded new clients in health tech segment and continue to grow our existing accounts. To bolster this success, I am happy to share that we have acquired Think Health to strengthen our offering for the insurance segment with the additional capability of ECG at home. This will allow us to give our insurance partners a one-stop solution for blood and ECG testing and will further deepen our presence in the pre-medical checkup, pre-policy medical checkup, and the annual health checkup market. We will soon be the company that can offer health checks with ECG at home, and I'm sure that will enhance our Arogyam brand. On the B2G side, we continue to execute TB projects in the state of Gujarat, Assam, and Maharashtra. On the international side, our lab setup in Tanzania is going on full swing, and we are on track to start the operations before the end of this financial year. As I've been telling you in the last quarters, we have revamped our equipment platform. Our equipment was quite old with an average age of 12 years. We've added 24 new machines from our vendors bringing our average age down to six years. These new additions have dramatically improved our reporting accuracy and turnaround time. As we get into the results, I wanted to share with you a few highlights and pointers before we deep dive into the same. Our franchisee business showed a revenue growth of 11%. Growth rate in franchisee business has slowed down largely because of churn in the small franchises. This churn was expected after we implemented volume-based pricing. Our big franchises have grown at 25%, while the small franchises have degrown. In terms of mix, contributions from big franchises have increased from 80% last year to 90% this year. 
majority of the small franchises have churned and the base is stabilized now going forward the franchisee business should return back to its high teens growth rate our partnerships business excluding api and b2g showed a strong revenue growth of 33% year on year on overall level our partnerships business has remained flat year on year on account of decline in api and closure of the mcgm contract overall the pathology business has grown by 8% year on year excluding materials radiology business including pulse high tech did a revenue growth of 9% year on year however at a consolidated level we did a 5% year on year growth largely because of the headwinds in api the government business and some of the smaller material sales business. with that i will hand over to alok to cover the results thank you rahul a warm welcome to each of you i will briefly update you about the key highlights of qc FY24 financial performance. Before we get into the detail, I will reiterate about the ESO program that we have been men mentioning in the last few quarters. This program has been introduced at group level to keep talent at higher tier. This ESO for talents company will invest over a period of six years, and we are recognizing the same as for India as a book entry, share based payment, reflected in P&L as expense and balance sheet as a equity contribution from parents. The value of ESOP granted is 45.53 crore over a period of six years. But one thing you must note that this is a cashless charge and there is no cash outflow. As per India's, India, the options are valued at grand date as per the black school formula, which is charged to PNL over the working period proportionately. Typically, it results in a hit in the year of grant. Then proportion charge over a period of vesting period. The breakup is included in the presentation. As this, as these charges are non-cash transactions, non-cash operating expenses, and do not affect the cash outflow of the company, we have normalized the data, which takes into account along with the provision of balance outflow debts. As Rahul mentioned, the revenue of the quarter is at 123 crore standalone, and uh, INR 135 crore at consolidated level. Uh, year on year improvement of 5 percent, aided by better partnership, revenue growth in excluding B2G and API revenue by 30 percent, and franchisee by 11 percent. Uh, pathology revenue excluding material are grown by 8 percent year on year. Our gross margin has improved by 3.3 percent points, which is stable in quarter on quarter, mainly driven by price increase, volume growth, and better negotiation. Our employee expenses have increased year on year on account of annual increment and decreased quarter on quarter due to the actuarial valuations. The same has been clarified in the previous quarter presentations that actuarial valuation is a timing difference. Our standard normal EBITDA margin stay flat 28% year on year, while quarter on quarter dip by 2% on account of deep in revenue due to festivity and seasonality, whereas overhead remained similar. EBITDA margin at radiology is to at 8% versus 19% year on year, mainly on account of age machine coming out of the CMC period uh, and change of revenue mix, mainly to moving to FDG plasma. Quarter on quarter EBITDA has improved due to the price division in few centers. Our consolidated financial, consolidated financial normalized EBITDA margin is at 26%, lower by 1% as compared to the same quarter previous year. With this, I will hand over the call to Rahul for strategic update. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alok. Just to reiterate our overall growth, if you exclude uh, API and B2G as a company, is about 15%. Uh, with that, I'll just take a few minutes to recap to you a strategic direction, then I'll open it up for Q&A. First, I will reiterate our value proposition to the customer. We will continue to remain an affordable option to all patients with good quality and on-time reports. All our efforts on our value proposition is towards ensuring low cost to the patient, assurance on quality of testing through our certifications and engagement with doctors. We have made substantial progress on this, which I updated in my initial comments, is reflected in our presentation, and this continues to remain at our core and will guide all that we do. Second, our strategy. We hope to become the B2B partner of choice to all front-end diagnostic services companies in India. 
whether it is a small diagnostic center in a semi urban area a pharmacy in the metro a small nursing home an individual doctor or a leading online diagnostic platform or health tech marketplace we are happy to provide low cost robust testing solutions to ensure that they can serve their patients in the most effective manner if they require phlebotomy we are happy to mobilize our phlebotomy network of almost 900 company and 400 network phlebotomists to serve them better with the addition of think health we will be able to serve our b2b partners with the solutions for ecg at home as well with the addition of test easy we will be able to now help them add genomic sequencing or genome sequencing for their customers too first to reiterate as i shared in the last few quarters we have three key pillars of growth the first is our franchise business the focus is to take our franchise business deeper into india with a focused test menu and provide our clients with a frictionless experience to transact with us and provide their customers the best partnerships in the pharmacy tb and infectious disease where we are by far one of the strongest players in the segment we have won tenders in gujarat and assam and have been working with maharashtra additionally we will continue to expand our partnership across healthcare companies hospitals and other health services companies to enable them to provide diagnostic testing to their customers the third area is new for us we believe we have a strong and robust b2c model with a core of execution we are ready to take this model forward with our first entry in tanzania the opportunity is tremendous for us to be able to launch a portable test that in a in brief is our mandate as management thank you so much for giving us a patient hearing as always i will end once again with a quote from the mahatma find purpose the means will follow and our purpose it means to provide affordable high quality testing to everyone with that i'll open up for q and a thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session Now, participants who wish to ask a question may press star and one on the touchtone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking questions. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. To ask questions, please press star and one. The first question is from the line of Rahul Agarwal from Incred Equities. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, very good evening, and thank you for the opportunity. Uh, firstly, congratulations, Rahul, for the additional loan at API. Uh, just to start with the questions, I think first on the Think Health acquisition, I wanted to know the buying of this asset. Uh, I get that. the benefit will come through insurance our clients but i couldn't really figure out uh, what do we get in return so essentially you know does this thoughts like a there was an entry barrier which is getting solved by this acquisition and uh, you know what is this asset all about could you just help understand that please sure uh, so see in insurance uh, one of the big gaps that tarocare had is when you have a pre policy medical checkup uh ecg is actually an integral co- component of that right uh since we were largely pathology only we could not you know service those orders fully so it was uh, you know many of the aggregators would work directly with the insurance companies where they were able to give both of these solutions to an insurance company through a single window uh of course you know there are not significant barriers to entry you know we could have built this ourselves uh but we felt that the thinkel team brought to the table two things one is the full understanding of how the insurance segment works and they've built the appropriate technology and operation to be able to service that demand right which if we had done on our own would have taken us upwards of a year the second is they have 100 patholo- uh, phlebotomists on the ground 
uh, who have been trained in administrating ECG at home, right? And they are equipped with ECG, mobile ECG equipment. And that was a ready base that we were immediately able to integrate into, or we will be immediately able to integrate into our phlebotomy network and be able to service ECG at home orders for all our insurance clients. So the real rationale behind the uh, acquisition was it's a new capability which would have taken us a long time to develop on our own and we were able to get it uh, quite quickly into our system. Perfect, got it. Uh, clearly understand what's happening. Secondly, on the sample volumes, I understand there was churn in franchises and seasonally this is a weak quarter. Any other reason for sample volumes to decline? Why? why? No, it's largely the churn. As I said, you know, we have uh, categories going from bronze all the way to diamond. Uh, so, you know, bronze being where we have the highest rate in the market and diamond where we, we offer franchisees a significant discount because of the volume. Uh, so, as I highlighted in the initial comments, our mix of, you know, large clients, which I would call diamond to silver, was about 80-20. So, 80% diamond to silver and then 20% bronze. Uh, that is actually now moved to 90% diamond and silver and you know less than 10% or roughly about 10% bronze. Uh, this we were expecting uh, would happen as we moved into that price tierization. Uh, what happens is over time these clients actually you know the bronze kind of uh, category will get attached to some of our diamond uh, you know franchisees and will come back. But we were expecting this to happen. We had timed it in a way that it happens in you know this quarter because this quarter is the uh, the quarter where anyway you see a significant dip because of the season and all of that. So we had timed it in a way that this this would come roughly six months after we launched the pricing strategy, and that's kind of how it has played out. Uh, it reached the bottom, so the churn in bronze also over the last three months has more or less been stable. There's not that that much more uh, churn that is happening over there. So as we get into the peak season, which is, you know, the entire fourth quarter or Feb, March more specifically, uh, actually we enter the peak season with a much stronger franchisee network. Uh, each of them transact much more with Thyrocare and therefore have the ability to invest and, and expand their business as we enter into the festive season. So I, I think most of this will get sorted out, you know, over the next two quarters. But in my understanding, if the, you know, silver and diamond go up and bronze goes down, it basically means that the volumes go up and realization go down. Isn't that correct? Yeah, but while the churn is happening, the net volumes remain the same. Once the churn stops, which is what I said over the last couple of months, three months exact to be precise, uh, we kind of reached the bottom of where the churn, churn would be. So now we will see the, the growth going forward. If you're referring to our overall pathology workload, right? Uh, so the franchisee workload, you know, has been more or less stable. It's not, not gone down at all. Our uh, partnerships workload has kind of been in line with revenue. So if we grew about 33% our partnership revenue, our workload has grown about 25 percent roughly the big dip in overall workload has come because of api and p2g where we've lost about four and a half lakhs of uh, workload on a year on year basis so mcgm was you know I'll, a very large workload account from a margin and ebitda point of view it was very narrow so actually there's very little impact on the ebitda of that workload going and api of course uh, you know over the last year has degraded Got it. And last question from my side on radiology. Uh, obviously, there is a declining trend in margin because of you know cost increases. Just wanted to understand: Are we headed to a cash loss here, or this this declining trend will stop next quarter? No, actually, last quarter also was quite bad, uh, but we've been able to arrest the decline, right? So last quarter, I think we landed at about 70 lakhs a bit. This quarter, we land at about 80. Uh, the bulk of the cost increases have actually got come into the base. So, you know, if you see the biggest hit that has happened in NHL is our other expenses has gone up by roughly about 
you know 60 70 lakhs uh, that is because the machines are very old and you know the cmc or maintenance costs have gone up uh, but now that's in the base right so uh, i don't see this business going into a cash loss uh, there is also a significant amount of depreciation there right so uh, there is about a crore and a half of depreciation that sits there so i think our cash position we are reasonably comfortable perfect thank you so much i'll come back and wish you all the best thank you thank you the next question is from the line of aditya kemka from ingred pms please go ahead hi good evening everyone and thanks for the opportunity uh rahul so since you know uh, the management change at hyrokia we have rationalized three streams of revenue uh the cpi business uh, b2g i understand it's not an instant intentional rationalization but it's happening nevertheless and now the uh, low ticket or the smaller franchisee um, going forward is there any other part of the business which you feel will get negatively impacted due to the initiatives that we are taking or do you think in terms of the rationalization of the less productive streams of revenue we are done yeah uh, thanks adidya i think largely you know you pointed to right thing i think api has bottomed out government we had exist exited and i think this entire bronze category clean up that we were planning is done uh, you know broadly i think actually if you look for the last two quarters you know the growth has been uh, quite robust uh, of all of these base businesses this was this franchisee pricing clean up was the last one that we had to do uh, but i think broadly that's it got it and we said that uh, you know the uh, larger franchises are earlier 80% of the revenues now they are 90 so the balance 10% bronze franchises that we still have is there a chance that they will also eventually drop out over the next 2 3 quarters or have you gotten any indications from them that they are okay with the pricing and they would actually scale up the business to move uh, upwards from the bronze category yeah so as i said uh, in the call we've been studying this you know quite closely uh, if you look at it over the last i would say 4 to 5 months that number has been stable so you know if they had to so they turned in the initial part so during july august september is where uh, we saw the the maximum amount of churn right just after we launched the scheme so over the last 4 months it's been stable whereas if you look at the large franchisees uh, the large franchisees have actually grown by you know almost 25% so that base is actually done quite well uh, this clean up was expected we were we were saying because our cost to serve over there is is quite high uh, so as we you know if we were charging the same price for a large franchisee versus a small franchisee uh it was actually margin dilutive to serve those clients at the old rate that we were serving them so we had to do this clean up understood and uh, on the margin profile side i also uh, you know 28% if i'm reading it correctly x uh, of efop charges and some one off that we have reported this quarter um where do you see the margins adjusted of the cfp top charges where do you see the margin trajectory once the bronze guys move out because the previous participant asked the question that if bronze guys move out basically margins could probably get you know compromised because these guys be pay lesser as you take more from them uh, so how, how do you see the margin trajectory over the next one or two years for the consult business see i have been always guiding to between 29 and 30 on the abida side i mean this quarter is anyway normally this quarter is uh, you know muted from a margin point of view uh, but mm-hmm. i think we'll cover it up in the fourth quarter so i think on a nine months basis we are still on track and i think for the full year we'll we'll be on track to be in that range of 29 to 30 this is from the fourth quarter you are saying or from the next fiscal year You know, from the fourth quarter itself, the fourth quarter tends to be very good from a revenue point. Yeah, that's uh, the best quarter seasonally. Okay, last question and a more strategic top-down question. Uh, now that you know API uh, Farm Easy doesn't have much business with us as it is, 
and they've been able to raise rice capital to sort of deleverage themselves. Um, what, do you, what, what do you see as the benefit of being part of the API group? Uh, why would they still hold on to ThyroCare as a subsidiary? And how does it benefit ThyroCare to be a subsidiary of API? Yeah, see, for us, uh, uh, right now, these are uh, related parties, but all transactions are done on arm's length basis. Uh, for us, uh, you know, Farmeasy still accounts for about 12, 13 crores of revenue every quarter. So they are our largest client or customer, you know, by far. So, mm -hmm. you know, from that point of view, they're very important to care. Okay. Uh, even from the API group side, uh, the diagnostics business is the, one of the most, actually the most profitable business on API as well. Uh, and so therefore, there will be intent to scale that business and see how much we can grow it. Uh, because if you look at it between medicines, uh, OTC products and diagnostics, uh, diagnostics even at an EBITDA level at API group is the most profitable. So there is definitely intent from that point, or API's point of view also, to scale the business. Right. Uh, and and is, is being a part of the API group a hindrance for you guys to approach other uh, medtech platforms to get B2B business from them? Or are they, are they really open to you guys despite you being a subsidiary of a competitor? We haven't faced that challenge at all, Aditya. We work with almost every health tech company in the country. Uh, it has never really uh, affected ThyroCare. Uh, we do, even on Pharmacy, we sell as ThyroCare. So if you see, go on the Pharmacy app, you'll see it's powered by ThyroCare. Uh, mm -hmm. And if you go on any of the other apps, I don't want to name names, but if you go on many of the other apps, almost every other app, you will find ThyroCare there as well. Right. Uh, sorry, I had one more. Uh, on the African entity, so how much have we already invested? And you said it would get operational from the fourth quarter. So are you already sort of incurring expenses on the African business on your PNL, or are you capitalizing those businesses as to your operating expenses? So overall, we have a commitment. You know, as I said, we would basically invest about 10 crores overall in Africa. Uh, so far, we have funded the African entity with roughly about three hundred and seventy-five thousand uh, dollars. So that's the level of investment we put. The the partner also will put match us at every stage of the investment. Uh, the work is underway. The lab will get operationalized this month. Uh, so we will be starting operations in this quarter. Uh, all the equipment has been bought. The lab has been set up. I mean, the final touches are going on at this point in time. Uh, but I think we are on track to launch this month, and uh, so the business will be operational, uh, I would say, in this quarter. So you are not currently incurring any, uh, as in, and when I say currently, I mean the December quarter. So in the December quarter, you did not have any operating expenses from the African entity on your PLI. So there, there is no operating, there is no operating expenses as the the operation expenses are incurring, and all is going to be capitalized. Uh, once we are going to start the operation, which is going to happen at the end of the quarter, what Rahul has said. I got that. Thank you, guys, and all the rest. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shubh from Ratnatraya Capital. Please go ahead. Shub, we can barely hear you. If you can hear us, yeah. uh, request you to use the handset. Hello. Yes, please go ahead. Yeah. Sorry for the distance. Uh, so I wanted to uh, get some more clarity on the API front. Um, how do you see it going further as a percentage of the revenue? And second, what is the difference in pricing given to API and to other B2B vendors or partners? Sure. Uh, see, in growth, I, I, as as the funding comes in and the investment plans get drawn up, right? Uh, I would expect API to, you know, grow between in in the teens. I would say not 
you know the super normal growth that we saw earlier uh, so i would be happy if that business grew at about 15% uh, maybe between 15 and 20% to where i would be happy if that business grew uh, on the second question uh, b2b uh, how the pricing like oh, the pricing is declared as part of our related party transaction uh, mentioned earlier they are the largest customer that we have by far so we have a standardized rate uh, you know across all our b2b partners and we have a slab wise discount uh, from there depending on the size of the customer at this point in time farmeasy enjoys a 15% discount from the uh, b2b rate uh, or you know basically our market rate uh, which is in line with the slab based discounts that we have uh, basically put in place understood understood and uh, second of uh, earlier uh, you had taken some efforts and experiments with changing the realization um, how do you see it going forward like change in realizations versus change in volumes what is your view on that see we normally i think pretty consistently do volume growth of roughly about 10% and it i i expect that to continue and maybe a 3 to 4% from price uh, so that kind of where i see a plan and that's it and that's it uh, thank you that's all from my side thank you the next question is from the line of meg shah from who's an individual investor please go ahead thank you for the opportunity and uh, first of all congratulations to rahul ji for the appointment as an uh, for president of operation of api in addition to the ndo okay but the sir my question is that will you be able to serve both the company efficiently uh i see the uh, as it has been declared i continue to remain the managing director of and ceo of sarkar i am spending time at api uh, to coordinate the synergies across the group so individual business leaders in api run their individual businesses i am there to ensure uh, synergies are captured across the group so and for that i am spending time as needed but my primary focus in thyrocare and ensuring that thyrocare continues to grow and deliver the margins expected yes because the many investors are wishing that the, you remain the md and you look after the thyrocare business more than the api business it's our wish uh, that's it my concern and so the second question is the how much capex the company thyrocare has incurred particularly during the quarter 3 and the first nine months of the year on pet lab and radiology and uh, and when the benefit of these capex will be seen in the profitability sure sure uh, i'll let alok take that question but uh, make first thank you for the vote of confidence and be rest assured that my primary responsibility continues to ensure that aerotair is on track in that all you can take the thank you rahul so on on the total capex what we spend over the period of nine months is around 46 crore rupees uh, of which uh, 6 crore pertains to previous year which cash outflow has happened in the current uh, financial year as mentioned in the uh, brief uh, presentations also we have spent uh, we have replaced our uh, our 24 machines uh, on which we have spent around 26 crores rupees around 24 crore rupees we have spent on lab infra and interior upgradations because all the labs are old and require lots of upgradations and uh, internal works so, so that has happened around 6 crore rupees we have uh, spent on the equity and it lease by upgradation it capex and all so in total we have spent around 46 crore rupees uh, in uh, in the nine last nine nine months that include uh, 9 crore rupees we spent on pulse uh, radi- radiology business also okay. and uh, on the benefit side the second question is the how uh, going to benefit us the, the capex spent has happened mainly because mainly on account of as the machine was aged uh, between 9 to 12 years and uh, require a replacement uh, so on the quality front we have uh, spent all this uh, capex so that will be we more we more focus on quality so that uh, reports are more accurate and uh, correct so 
that uh, that resulted in uh, uh, converting the revenue and trust uh, from the consumer side and charity side uh, on radiology business we have spent 9 crore rupees and uh, that we have uh, through pulse investment and which is coming in radiology investments we are expecting over a period that's going to convert into a more 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 than beneficial more ebitda for the patients and uh, sir my question is that when whenever the company incurs the some capex their opex is reduced their capacity is increased quality is increased and ultimately because of this the profitability increase when the uh, in real term in the financial term the profitability profitability will increase uh, so sir there are two parts to one is you know what we invested in capex last year uh you know if you see our gross margin also most of that is comes from efficiency uh, in our cost of operation uh, so if you look at the pnl also our gross margin last year was about 68% uh, this year it is 71% of course some of that has come from price hike yes. but also from the uh, efficiency from the equipment so one part of that is ki we are already seeing the efficiency in the gross margin right uh the second part which is the where when we have invested in quality over time that results in more and more confidence you know on our reports and more and more uh, customers coming and repeating with us uh, that i think will come over the next couple of years the you know the confidence from the equipment and the, but the benefits have already come in the gross margins Okay, okay, ma'am. Sir, sir, this, in this quarter there is a revenue growth, and I think it is mainly due to the value growth, not the volume growth. The volume has reported to some big growth. So, when the company will be on a sustainable volume growth path? As I said, the uh, the volume decline has largely been because of the, the exit we exited from the government business. Yes. and we our uh, parent pharmacies business has de grown the rest of the business is growing quite well that if you remove these two effects a and b to g the rest of the business has grown at 15% year on year and as these uh, you know reach the bottom or i have reached the bottom i expect the business also to get back on a strong growth trajectory okay okay suppose suppose the uh, we don't get the any business from the government or the very lesser business from the api then this can we consider this is a base and now onward the company will report the volume growth yes yes very much in fact if you look over the last two quarters uh, we were you know uh, tracking quite well on the volume and revenue growth this quarter as i said you know we we had put some pricing strategy in place uh, which you know we were expecting the smaller companies to smaller technology partners to you know act out because we had prices there uh, which was expected but as aditya had also asked right uh, i think for all the business we have tried to exit i think we have not reached the bottom so going forward i think we should be back on a good growth track okay sir earlier we were making the good profit from the radiology business radiology business has reported the i think the operating loss or net loss so when this business will achieve the break even or what is the reason for making them loss the radiology business as i said sir uh, last last quarter was was in a loss this quarter it has come back into profit uh, and you know the reason it had gone into a loss uh, was largely because of the equipment being very old and having lot of breakdown in the business uh, we have been working very hard to cut all of that and bring the business back on track as i said from a cash flow basis the radiology business is uh, quite fine uh what hurts us is you know e- effectively the the equipment life and the breakdown and there's still a substantial depreciation charge that hits us okay so 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 there is a yeah, I'm, i'm really sorry to interrupt but maybe request you to rejoin the queue as there are several other participants waiting that's, to ask that question okay 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 nice thank you thank you thank you
Uh, we move to the next question. The next question is from Aditya from Securities Investment Management Company. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. So, uh, we break up our revenue into three parts, that is franchisee partnerships and D2C. So, if you could just help us understand the difference between all these three categories in terms of scope of work of thyroid care for the customers, pricing, or any other different parameters. Sure. It's also explaining the presentation uh, towards the end. But I'll just give you a brief uh, summary. Our franchise businesses are offline partners. So think of it as ThyroCare branded pathology lab or pathology collection centers, or even independent pathology centers who outsource their uh, uh, testing to ThyroCare. So that is largely our franchisee business. So it's, it's an entirely offline business where we partner with roughly now, I think about 7,500 of these offline partners. Our partnership business is working with uh, many of the large insurance players, large pharma companies, large health tech players of which one is PharmEasy, where we not only support them with the testing, but we also support them with the blood collection, right? So we have a fleet, as I mentioned, 900 company phlebotomists and 400 franchisee phlebotomists who go to the house and service the orders. So like for PharmEasy, PharmEasy places an order on ThyroCare. ThyroCare technician will go to the house, collect the blood sample, bring it to a ThyroCare lab, and then ThyroCare will re release the result to PharmEasy. So we have similar arrangements with almost all the health tech players. And we also work with many large corporates, insurance, as well as pharma companies to help do the same. So that's the scope of the partnerships business. The D2C business is the business that we get from thyrocare.com, the website, Thyro app, which is our app. Got it. And so these individual franchisees, are they only give the volumes to Thyrocare or they can give the volumes to other players as well? So as I said, the Thyrocare branded franchisees work exclusively with Thyrocare. Uh, but the non-branded franchisees work with multiple partners. And currently, what will be the proportion of both these? So, uh, from a count point, roughly about 800 ThyroCare branded. The remaining are ThyroCare unbranded. From a business point of view, I think it will be 30% from a business point of view will be ThyroCare branded and 70% will be ThyroCare branded. Okay. Okay. And sir, uh, in terms of geographic expansion, uh, we had incurred, we had set up a lot of labs when you took over the company. So have we, uh, as well as KPEX expansion being completed or do you, feel, do you still feel that we have to open more labs and deepen our geographical presence? I think by and large the KPEX expansion in India is completed. Uh, we may do few selective expansions where we feel there is a good opportunity and our presence is, is low. But by and large we are quite happy. We have about I think 50 labs across the country. If you drop if you drop a pin anywhere in India, there will be a thyrocare lab within two kilometers. So. By and large, we are quite happy with the expansion. I don't think we'll be expanding too many at this point in time, uh, but we will look at Africa as I mentioned. Got it. I'll say just one last question. Uh, we had a partnership revenue of total 35 crores and 23 crores was excluding API and B2G. So the balance 12 crores is purely from uh, FarmEasy, or we have some government revenue as well? Yes. Government business will be about one and a half crores. The vast majority will be fine. Got it, got it. Okay, sir. Thank you for answering my question. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rahul Agarwal from Ingrid Equities. Please go ahead. Well, thanks for the follow-up. Just one question on the international business. Uh, how much time will it take for this business to see your internal revenue expectations at Tanzania? <laughs> So uh, I would say 2025, uh, FY 2025, our expectation from Tanzania is, uh, you know, 
quite small uh, i would anticipate in the 2 to 3 crore range that's it uh, but then as we scale up in the next year and the year after is when we expect it to be substantial okay and the related question was so let's say annually you reach 2 3 crores so when do we start investing for other locations does it start in fiscal 25 at all or do you want to stabilize tanzania first experience that and get and then maybe fy26 you start investing for other locations yes because we will not do a lab in 20 25 uh, we will only look after we have stabilized and we have fully understood the market okay get it so so the next year capital expenditure plan uh, would you have a number to that fiscal 25 apart from you know the investment uh, yeah. last allocation to take care. so approx uh, in this quarter we are going to spend around 3 crore rupees uh, approximately uh, out of which maybe 1 and 1/2 crore rupees is going to be on account of uh, uh, machine uh, machine replacement and 3 3 and 1/2 crore rupees is Going to be for miscellaneous. That's the projections we have. We are asking for next year. Next year we'll come back on the uh, yeah guidance. It's not going to be substantial, Rahul, but we'll come back with a specific number. I would anticipate it to be you know, around the 30 crore range. Okay, get it. And fourth quarter, uh, Alok said was five crore, right? Yeah, five crore. What is it? We are projecting we are going to five okay. year. Okay. Thank you so much. All the best. Thanks. Thank you very much. We'll take that as the last question. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Rahul Goa for closing comments. Thank you, everyone, for joining us and spending time with us. And for all the questions, uh, I hope I've been able to answer them to your satisfaction. Uh, as always, we continue to remain focused on our strategy. which is to be the most affordable good quality diagnostic test partner for one in the healthcare business and we continue to execute on this strategy we have been investing in improving our quality improving our reach and ensuring our turnaround time is as close to best in class and we made substantial progress on all of this i thank you for all your support on this journey and with that i'll hand over to kapratik to close the call Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Thyroke Technologies, uh, that concludes this conference. Uh, we thank you all for joining this evening. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. With that, we conclude the conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines.